It's time for the March round of the My Bad TBR game. Let's jump right into it. Hello, beautiful friends. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to The Continuing Chronicles. It is already time to select my March TBR, so we're going to go ahead and get into the gameplay in just one second. I did want to say that for the next few rounds of this game, I'm going to be attaching a goal or a theme. Recently, I filmed a video about authors I need to read for one reason or another. Basically, the ultimate goal is to read these authors to determine whether or not I want to keep them on my radar. A major goal of mine for the next few months is to really solidify the answers to these questions questions in my mind and I'm hoping to whittle this list down quite a lot. So going forward with the next few rounds of the My Bad TBR game, I'm going to have a caveat that every single prompt must be satisfied by a book from an author that I need to read. And I think that's really all the housekeeping that I wanted to do this time. So let's jump into the gameplay. Hello everyone. It is now time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. Hopefully I remembered to mention this in the introduction to this video. However, my next few rounds of this game are going to have a theme. If you have watched this video recently that I did about the authors that I need to read for one reason or another, my goal with the next few rounds of this game is going to be to knock out that list. So basically for every single prompt that I land on during this game, I'm going to try to satisfy that prompt with an author that I need to read. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. Okay, number two, perfect, because I can move this guy out here onto a free space. However, a two means draw again. So instead of six draws total, I will be doing seven draws total. All right, my first draw was a number two and I did land on a free space. Now I will go ahead and attach a book to that. I'm going to read The Line Between by Tosca Lee. This was actually the very first book that I received as part of the Pieces and Pages bookish subscription service. This sounds really interesting. It sounds like it's post-apocalyptic that was brought about by an outbreak of early onset dementia. So this early onset dementia swept the country and basically ravaged it, creating an apocalyptic landscape. And the main character of this had been part of a doomsday cult for years and didn't actually realize that any of this was happening. And she's been cast out of this cult. And now she has to deal with the apocalypse that she and her doomsday cult had basically been preparing for her whole life. And then I guess one day her sister shows up with these medical samples and our main character has to get these medical samples to a lab because it just could be the key to saving everybody. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be action packed and thrilling. And I'm excited to get into it. Tosca Lee is not an author that I've ever read before. So if I do enjoy this, then maybe definitely she can be another author to go onto my radar. Okay, we have another two. So we are going to be doing eight draws, lucky me. And let me go ahead and move forward to and that is to read a new release. So on my second draw, I drew another number two. This landed me on the prompt to read a new release. And for that, I'm going to read Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. Now, a lot of the book of the month books that I get are by authors that I have never read before. I don't want these books to be sitting on my shelves and me never realizing whether I actually enjoy Darby Kane. So even though Darby Kane is not necessarily an author that is on my radar, this is a book that I already have on my shelves and I do want to go ahead and get it read. So this definitely satisfies my goal to limit the amount of authors that are on my radar because if I do not like this then I'm probably never going to read another Darby Kane that's just how my mind works but if I do love it then I'll probably put Darby Kane on a read more book spy and go from there to decide whether Darby Kane is an author for me. I don't know much about this but if I remember correctly this is a thriller about a husband who is missing and a wife who is concerned not because he is missing but because she was the last one to see him he was dead and now his body is gone. <laughs> when I first read that prompt on the book of the month website I was so because this definitely sounds different. This is definitely not the, oh, husband is missing. Wife has no idea what happened to him. Wife uncovers this super secret mystery past that her husband has been hiding from her this whole time, yada, yada, yada. This sounds like the wife killed the husband and now the husband's body is missing and the wife has to determine what actually happened to his body. So that sounds amazing and I'm definitely here for it. So I'm excited to get into this and I hope it's as great as it sounds because I would love to find another solid mystery thriller writer. I am always on the hunt for solid mystery thriller writers. So hopefully Darby Kane can become that for me. Draw number three. Okay, four, which is perfect because I can actually do one, two, three, four, which means I'm now in line to go right into my safety. And that is actually to read a second chance book or author, which is perfect. I definitely have a lot of those. My next draw was a number four. I moved backwards four and landed on the prompt to read a second chance book or author, which is perfect because a lot of these authors I'm trying to give a second chance to, to determine if I want to continue with them. So basically I have a lot of authors on my list who I've read one book by and their book impressed me enough that I wanted to keep these authors 
authors on my radar, but I haven't really read anything since then. And so in order to kind of eliminate some of these authors, I want to read another book by. So for this, I've decided to select How to Make Friends with the Dark by Kathleen Glasgow. In January, I read Girl in Pieces and actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. It really documents the struggles of a girl who has like mental illness problems, who was cutting herself and her road to redemption, like her road to find herself and pick up the pieces. I don't really know a lot about what How to Make Friends with the Dark is about, but I think it's going to have that signature Kathleen Glasgow style of being a YA with a lot of darkness about a young adult character who is trying to overcome this darkness. Or, I mean, I guess in the title, they're trying to make friends with it. I do want to give Kathleen Glasgow a second chance because I only have one impression of her. Additionally, she writes young adult. And because I'm moving away from young adult, I really want to solidify whether or not I'm going to continue with her as a young adult author because I'm starting to become very, very, very selective in the young adults that I pick up. And I don't want to waste time with keeping Kathleen Glasgow on my radar if I'm not going to enjoy her books going forward. But I did really enjoy Girl in Pieces. I do love YA that is harder hitting and that packs a punch. And How to Make Friends with the Dark will probably be that as well. Okay, an ace, I can either use that to move my final guy from start onto the free space, which would not give me a book, or I can move one up into my safety zone. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and actually take advantage of this free space here just because I did get two draw twos. And so having that free space will help me get back down to the normal amount of books that I wanted to read with these draws. Next, I drew an ace. And now for an ace, I can either move from start or I can move forward one. I did have another guy in start, so I moved him onto a free space. And I do have a book that I want to read. It is the newest book that I received from the book drop, and it is completely outside my comfort zone. I have Glimmer of Death by Valerie Wilson Wesley. And this is a cozy mystery. Honestly, when I got this, I did not know what to do because I was so shocked. I did not expect to receive anything like that from the book drop. If you remember, the book drop is a book only subscription, and there are multiple options that you can choose from. If you only like chick lit, women's fiction, adult contemporary type books, you can select the bubbly option. If you like historical literary fiction, you can choose tea. If you like mysteries, thrillers, suspense, all of that, you can choose coffee or you can choose a combination of the two. And you can also choose young adult. I don't believe there's any genres attached to that. You just say that you want the young adult subscription and they send you young adult books. I have canceled the young adult one. I am still currently on the coffee and bubbly and I also have added coffee and tea. I don't know if that's going to increase the likelihood of me receiving receiving duplicate books, but I definitely know that I don't want to be receiving random young adult books. Anyway, all of that to say is this was definitely a random choice for my coffee and bubbly bookish subscription because I never expected to receive a cozy mystery. It never occurred to me that would even happen. And cozy mysteries are definitely not something that I read. Now I used to, when I was really young, like back in my teenager days, I used to really enjoy a good cozy mystery, but y'all know I need a lot of substance and and character dynamics and development in the books that I read. And I don't really feel like a cozy mystery is going to give me that. However, on a whim, I decided to go ahead and pick this up physically just because I didn't have anything going physically. And I'm already about 50 pages into it. Yeah, I'm 54 pages into this. And surprisingly, I'm really enjoying this. I'm finding it to be a very engaging read. And so hopefully I enjoy this a lot more than I thought. I don't necessarily think that this is going to blow me out of the water, but so far there is an interesting cast of characters and I'm enjoying our main character as well. And this definitely is a new release. So this technically could also satisfy the new release category. If I don't end up getting to Pretty Little Wife, I could move this from the free space and move this to the new release category because this was actually published in 2021. So it is definitely a brand brand new release. I have never heard of this author, but I guess she is like award winning and pretty acclaimed. So, you know, I'm going to give it a shot and see what I think about it. Okay. Draw number five. 10. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Highest rated on TBR. Oh boy. I don't think I'm ready for that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 10 social media recommendation. So that basically means that I get to read a book that has been highly recommended over social media. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 
Next, I drew a 10. I moved forward 10 and I landed on social media recommendation. And for this, I'm going to pick The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Riley Sager is definitely an author I need to read more from to get an idea of how I feel about him. I hated Final Girls with a passion, but I really, really enjoyed Home Before Dark. And I've heard pretty solid things about The Last Time I Lied as well as Lock Every Door. So The Last Time I Lied has been mentioned highly through social media. I believe Lala from Books and Lala really enjoyed this one as well. So I'm definitely gonna give this a shot and hopefully I like it. I mean, as long as I enjoy the books more than Final Girls, I'm happy. From what I understand, about this. This actually follows Emma who when she was at a summer camp watched her roommates sneak out of their cabin in the middle of the night and then they never return and nobody really knows what happens to them. Now fast forward probably a couple of decades and Emma is a rising star in the art world. She is a painter and she kind of channels her past experiences into these paintings including her memories of what happened that night and her paintings captured the attention of the current owner of Camp Nightingale which is where those girls disappeared and the owner of the camp invites Emma to come back and be a painting in instructor. And I think Emma probably is going to use this opportunity to figure out what happened to her friends back then. And you know, secrets are going to revealed and shenanigans are going to ensue. I'm not sure, but I am down for the ride. I am definitely, if you cannot tell, in the mood for suspenseful, thrilling, dark type of books. I am definitely looking forward to this. I want to dive more deeply into Riley Sager to see what I think of him. So I'm going to give this a shot. Draw number six. Okay, let's just go ahead and move forward five. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. And I would slide and I would land on book box. Ooh, ooh, I think I like that. Or let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Mental health rep. Ooh, that's a good one too. Um, You know what? I am always looking to get rid of more of my book of the month books. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, whoop, book box. My next draw was a number five. I moved forward five and I landed on book box, which is great because y'all know that I'm trying desperately to get through my book of the month books. And I do have a few in this round of the TBR game, which is fantastic. So for this, I actually decided to choose Winter Sister by Meg Collins. This is kind of a similar situation to Darby Kane. I have never read a Megan Collins before. I don't really know of her or anything that she's done previously. I don't even know if this is a debut book. She's not really an author that is on my radar per se, but because her book sounded interesting, I got it from Book of the Month. It has just been sitting there and I don't want this sitting there taking up space. I want to know whether I'm going to love this, whether I want to unhaul it, whether I want to continue with Meg Collins as an author. You get the drift. Again, this is another like dark, twisty thriller kind of book because this follows our main character, Sylvie, whose sister unexpectedly disappeared 16 years ago when she left to go hang out with her boyfriend and she never returned. Sylvie ends up returning to the hometown to care for her estranged mother Annie who is undergoing cancer treatments but what's worse than that is that her sister's former boyfriend the one that she was out with the night that she disappeared is now working in the cancer ward so Sylvie constantly has to see him when her mother is at treatment but also Sylvie is very estranged from her mother. Her mother kind of let their relationship disintegrate after Persephone the sister disappeared and so Sylvie is definitely dealing with a lot. She's dealing with having to care for a very sick mother, a mother she is not not very close to and she's also having to see the boyfriend of her missing sister. So of course this is another situation where probably a lot of secrets are going to be revealed and it sounds like Sylvie might carry some guilt herself about what could have possibly happened to her sister. So I'm excited to uncover those secrets and see where it goes. Okay I believe this is draw number seven. Move forward three. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward three here. And I'm going to read Good by Perfect by Sarah Bernard, which is perfect because Sarah Bernard is one of those authors that I need to read. So that is fantastic. That worked out perfectly. Next, I drew a number three. And so I moved forward more into my safety. I was at the very beginning of safety. I moved more safely into safety. And now, as you'll know, all of the boxes in within my safety zone now have a prompt. So when I moved three, it landed on Goodbye Perfect by Sarah Bernard. Sarah Bernard is definitely an author I need to read more from. I read A Quiet Kind of Thunder a couple of years ago and really enjoyed it. I honestly don't remember a lot of the details about it, but I do know that I enjoyed it so much at the time that I was constantly recommending it. I was telling everybody that they needed to read it because it does deal with mental health health issues. It also has disability rep because one of the main characters in there I believe is deaf. So I really enjoyed it and since then I bought her other releases. So I have more books of hers on my shelves and I haven't read any of them and so I need to know if Sarah Bernard is going to be a young adult author particularly that I'm going to want to read. So I'm going to read this. This sounds like it's going to be a little bit maybe controversial and a little bit harder hitting just because this follows our main character Eden and what happens after her best friend runs away with the boyfriend that she is dating who happens to be their music teacher. And then of course the police show up one day 
asking Eden where Bonnie is. Eden knows where Bonnie is, but because she's a loyal friend, she's really struggling with this because she's being questioned by the police. She's being questioned by her parents. And she's also now just starting to have doubts herself about whether she should cover for Bonnie and what's going on. So it sounds like this is really going to be about Eden trying to come to terms with this and decide what she should or should not do, whether she should remain steadfast and loyal to her friend or whether she starts to realize that this is wrong and that she needs to help Bonnie by revealing her secrets. So I'm definitely interested to see how this goes. It sounds like it's going to have some very interesting character dynamics dynamics and I'm here for it. And then I believe this is the final draw. Okay, so let's see here. If I move forward three, that gives me an anonymous girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pacannon, but I'm not really iffy on them. I know that I want to continue. I know the smart thing to do would be to get me into home base, but reading that book is not going to help me with my goal. So I think what I'm going to do is do one, two, three and have a friend pick. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not going to slide right here, that's just because this red guy is actually yellow. So he's not supposed to be red, but Nola ate one of my reds and one of my yellows. So I'm not going to slide because technically this guy should be yellow. So this is going to be a friend pick. So I think I'm just going to have my husband pick a book for me. And then my final draw was another number three and that landed on friend pick. So what did I do? But I told my husband he needed to come in here and pick a book and he picked since you've been gone by Morgan Matson. So this is another situation where I have really enjoyed Morgan Matson in the past. I've read two of her previous books and I did like them a lot. So far, Morgan Matson has not let me down and I have every other book that she has published. However, this is another situation where because my reading tastes have changed and more often than not, I'm picking up young adult books and they don't impress me, I'm really concerned that I'm not going to want to continue with her as an author. So I figure picking this up is another good way for me to decide whether Morgan Matson is going to be one of those solid staple YA authors. And I have actually started reading this. I started listening to this today and I'm about an hour and a half in and so far I'm enjoying it. So I'm excited to continue reading this. And you know, it'd probably help if I actually told you what this is about. This follows our main character, Emily. And at the very beginning of this book, her best friend Sloane has mysteriously vanished with her family. Sloane didn't say anything. Sloane is not answering her phone. Emily cannot get a hold of her at all. She has no idea what happened, no idea where Sloan went, where her parents are, nothing. And then suddenly she receives a letter in the mail from Sloan and all it has is a list. Sloan has been known to send lists to Emily to help kind of get her outside of her comfort zone because Emily is very, very shy and introverted. It was always Sloan who was the social one, Sloan who kind of pulled Emily out of her shell, Sloan who knew how to navigate every single situation. And so Emily relied on Sloan a lot for that. But now Sloan is gone, Emily doesn't know what happened to her. And now all she has is this list of things that Sloan wants her to do with no context or anything like that. Literally just a list of things that she wants Emily Emily to do. And Emily, of course, is very nervous, but she feels like if she does these tasks, maybe they will lead her to Sloan. So I am enjoying this and I hope to continue reading it and continue enjoying it. All right, y'all, that is it. Those are all the books that I want to try to read for March. I do have two books that are on my radar to read. One is a book by Heather Demetrios. I definitely want to read more from her because I loved Bad Romance and I want to see what she does with other stories. And then Jennifer L. Armentrout, I've mentioned this before, but she's like a top priority author for me. She's prolific. She's been around for quite a while. I hear a lot of things about her all of the time and her newest series is getting a lot of buzz but I feel like before I pick up a new series that I'm almost guaranteed to like I should probably start with maybe backlist titles to see if I enjoy those and then kind of work my way up just that's just because that's just how I am you know I really want to know that if I like an author I want to read their backlist and their new releases so I definitely have two books that I might want to read but they're not going to be officially on my March TBR they're just going to kind of be there and if I get to them I get to them if I don't I don't so if I do include those I have 10 books that I want to read for March which is ambitious I'm having a really hard time listening to audiobooks right now simply because I'm not diamond painting as much. I'm not commuting to work. I'm not getting ready every morning. And those are like the three main times that I listen to audiobooks. So I'm having to like make myself do things to listen like clean and so on and so forth. So it's not as easy for me to listen, but I definitely want to try to get through as many of these as possible and hopefully kind of lift myself out of the slump that I've been feeling. So hopefully this is another successful month because February was pretty successful for me. So that is all that I have for you today. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books that I will be reading. I would love to know what your thoughts were on those. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I post content on Tuesdays, sometimes Saturdays, and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.